message from Facebook that uh, our page has been reported that we have been posting some offensive contents and that we should explain ourselves. And that shows you how sensitive this jackpotting is to people. That they are willing to go and report that it's, a, that it's, a, it's, an, it's, a, <laughs> it's an offensive content. Who are you to say this? Because, but you know that this generation that we live in right now is a sensational generation. They don't listen to the old message. They just pick a clip and they make up their mind. And that just shows the level of shallowness of a lot of people. But we'll be looking at before you join the Japa Bad Wagon, vital consideration to look into. And we've done an extensive job in the last two weeks. We want to see if we can wrap it up today. If not, the next week Sunday we'll wrap it up and take some questions. But some considerations that we've been able to establish is number one, you need to establish where you are going. Number two, you need to establish why you want to go. Number three, you need to establish how you are going. Right? I think that's where we stop. So let's look at two other considerations and see if we can wrap that up within the time that is available to us. Before you join the Jackpot bandwagon, number four, the fourth thing that you need to consider is what will you do when you get there? What will you do when you get there? So if someone is leaving the country to go to school, he or she already knows I'm going to school. So that means you are going to school. And you're going to be in school for X number of years, depending on the course that you're going to do. But many times when people are going, let's, I'm going to take one, two, two or three examples just to help you get clarity. So let's say you're going to school, so you decide to go to school. I hope you know that if you are going to school, that means that you are going to be in another country and probably for the next four years you will actually be spending money not making money so the question is who will now pay your school fees for that four years because many people think that they will use school to enter when they get there they will drop off and not go to school again because people don't give you the real, real information and many people don't realize that most of the time when you are going as a student your visa is tied to your school and many of the nations have done it in such a way that when you want to get a visa to go to school, you talk to the school, they give you an admission, and they give you, depending on the country, a particular document that you will go to the embassy with to show that this person has paid. And when they are releasing the visa to you in some countries, it's actually the school that approves the visa to be released to you. And when you graduate, they have structured the country in such a way that that school will now inform them that this person has graduated and once you graduate within 90 days you are expected to leave the country so there are countries now where you think you are going to go and stay and by the time you graduate you discover you can't stay one of the reasons why a lot of people are going to the uk right now is because the uk had that policy where within 90 days you have to go they have reviewed that and now after graduation you now have two years post graduation to work and that's why people are rushing to the UK because the UK is in a recession. They are in trouble right now. And they need your money because their own students will not pay that kind of money. So they need your money. So you are like an income generator for them. So they are bringing you so that you can bring your money to come and help them because they have gone out of Brexit and now the Queen has died and the money too is dying. Hello? So now listen. Many people will also tell you, oh, when you go, ah, you can be schooling and working. Hey, don't let people deceive you. There is a number of hours you are permitted to work within the week as a student. Once you exceed that number of hours, it is considered that you are already working in error to what you are supposed to do. And that's why when you go to school, most universities have campus jobs that they will give to students to do on campus. And you need to be careful because people tell you all these things. So what are you going to do? If you say you are relocating, you, may, you have a husband or a wife, you are relocating to go and meet your family, or you have somebody that wants to marry you and you are relocating. The person that you are relocating to go and meet, does the person have a job that is strong enough to take care of all of you? And by the time you get there, what will you also be doing there? Recently, I think about two or three weeks ago, Twitter was agog because of a guy that is in the UK that has a fiance, or is it fiance or fiance, English people? The man in London. Which, which one be the woman? Fiance, right? Uh, that has a fiance in Nigeria, and the guy sent a message to say, my babe, 
As they prepare to come London, go and learn hairdressing, go and learn this and the babe provoke. Who do you think you are? How can you tell me, me, go and be learning hairdressing? Go and be. So the girl became angry, thinking that the man is looking down on her. And the guy is saying, you can't come to London without having something to be making small money Why we are trying to settle down. The guy now had to speak to his friend to go and tell the girl, to explain to her. He said, no, ah, when I reach London, I will learn it. But so you know, some people, uh, you know, not only, fine, not only face fine, brain no fine. So you need to be very, very careful. Because these things, you know, when I, when I spoke about is your marriage strong enough last week, this is the reality. So what are you going to do when you get there? Because people will promise you, oh, there is a job waiting for you. You just land first. Just land first. If I, you will stay in my house. This and that, that and this. We have our sister that left like that. The lady told her, oh, you will stay in my house. Eh, no problem. Enter the house and she got a job for her. True, true. But it was our own accounts that they were paying the salary into and once the money came she gave her the balance he said, he said no uh -uh. you think you'll be staying in the house for free uh, we are going to be sharing and sharing everything so you want to be sending money to nigeria what you think me i'm here to play so be careful so when you are going do you have a game plan because all these lies they are telling you there is job everywhere it's not true it's not or else you will get there and you'll still be at the bottom of the pyramid there are people that were bank managers in nigeria there are people that were ceos in nigeria that sold houses sold property and now they are driving uber and now they are doing security now they are in the underground and so they will remain there for 15 years or more so you must have a game plan what will you do when you get there so that before you leave you already have all these things planned out Many people have ended up remaining at the bottom of the pyramid for decades because of the way they started out. Because of the way they started out. And you just discover that you are just in one factory somewhere, you are just in one place somewhere. Please be careful. Many people are going now as professionals. And as professionals, when you get into the foreign country, maybe what you need to do is to do one or two courses, do one or two certifications to carry your degree in nigeria or your um, certificate in nigeria to adapt it to their own system and then pop you are good to go and many people say oh no if you are a nurse there is job for every nurse hey why do we keep deceiving ourselves like this that you just go there because you are a nurse there is job for every nurse no there are certifications that you still need to do to be able to enter the realm where some serious money will come and many people don't even have the brain to pass that exam we know people that have been writing the exam for six years, they never pass. Yes, because the exam is instant. It's not uh, somebody will mark it. There's no lecturer to send to. There's no handout to buy. There's no Nigerian factor. As you are writing the exam, it's computer. You will see your results. It's like I say, instant. Look, many of you have no idea the kind of suffering that undocumented immigrants go through in a foreign land the kind of pain the lack of freedom your father will die you will not be able to come mother will die you will not be able to come all kinds of things you will not be able to come and you you have no idea but you know no matter what you say some people say let me go and face it by myself let me go and face it by myself no problem number five let me close so i can have enough time to move on the fifth consideration is what I call woo. And there are many dimensions to this woo. Four levels of woo that you need to consider before you jack. But number one, who is leading you? Who is leading you on this your proposed trip? Who is leading you to go on the journey? Is it God that is leading you to say, okay, my son, my daughter, this is an opportunity I want you to explore. You know, we've dealt with that. Everybody cannot be in Nigeria forever. There's nothing wrong in relocating. Relocating is part of life. We're a global city. We've dealt with that. Or is it just something that you wish to do or you desire to do? It's an aspirational desire. And there's nothing wrong in aspiring. But just be sure that you have all these things covered. Because when the trouble comes, it will still affect us. So we want to make sure that we do our job so that when the trouble comes, if it comes, we will know that you know what you are facing. Is there economic reason or poverty that is leading you? Because there are poor people everywhere. 
I've told you in the last three weeks, there are people born in America that are poor. They are Americans. They born them for America. They are poor. So, it's not the location. <laughs> there are people born in London that are poor. So, any country you go to, there are citizens of that country that are poor. So, it's not about, in Nigeria, people are making money. So, no matter the excuse you give, be sure that you have all these things covered. Or is it your spouse? And that's a major problem. And I've told you guys, men, be careful of women. Hello? Even women God know themselves. Be careful because at the end of the day, you are the one that will suffer. You the man, you are the one that will suffer. So all this one that your wife will be whispering to you, look, women have been serving apple from Genesis. They are still serving the apple. Be careful not to eat the apple you are not supposed to eat. Oh, you know, my husband, because you know, in those days, I used to say that, you know, as a pastor, even if everybody leaves you, you are sure you have one member, your wife, that revelation has expired. Because there are pastors now whose wife have said, it's you that God called. And they have moved on. See? So, and then they begin to try softly. Hey, is it with this country? Hey, let's think of the children. You know, because of the children. Because of, so because of the children is the password. They'll be using to... And then every time there is a crisis in Nigeria, or there is a... Somebody say, you see? You see? Hey, you see? The way they'll be throwing it is like softly and tenderly. And before you know it, because you think you want peace to reign, you now relocate. And you have forgotten that the money you people are making, that is making you to live the kind of life you are living, is here that is producing the money. You now uproot yourself from here. All in the name of, I want to give my family a better life. You will put them there. And the same woman that is moving you, yeah, she has a car. Yeah, she has a driver. Yeah, she has gate map. Yeah, she has house gear. Yeah, she's not really doing much. You are taking care of everything. She now travels with that mindset and gets abroad and expect that even billionaires don't have drivers. Abroad, she now begin to say, ah, "I can't drive. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, school run." And you begin to, sh you, it go shock you. Hey, the verse. No weapon formed against my microphone shall prosper every feminine weapon hello it will shock you because the question is your wife is leading you does she has the money to do it you will now close down your business shut down things and you don't realize that when you are not there to run things the money will not come the way it used to come and then by the time you people now get there she's still expecting to live the kind of life she used to live so, I've sat down with many couples and I've asked questions. So, my sister, this woman that goes, so which job you go go do when you reach there now to take care of yourself and the family? And they are looking. Because many of them are still expecting the man to now be giving them allowance of Nigerian money chained to Naira, Naira to dollar. I'm telling you the realities that people don't tell you. So, who is leading you? Is it your friends and family? See, ah, guys, come, a PhD, there is scholarship. They just tell you all kinds of things. They don't give you full story. Well, just be sure that whosoever is leading you is also powerful enough to sustain you. The second who, who are you? Have you done an honest personal evaluation and assessment of yourself? Because I hope you know that location does not change people. If you are lazy and visionless in Nigeria, you relocate to America, you are lazy and visionless. You will suddenly become hardworking because you relocated. I can't come and kill myself. If that's your software, you will get there. I can't come and kill myself. And it's even easier for you to be complacent because there are many things that are basic that you will enjoy almost for nothing. So you just see that 10 years have gone by and you have not done anything meaningful with your life. Yes, you are eating and you are looking fresh. I hope you know that there are poor and confused people all over the world. And anywhere you are going to, there are poor people there. I've said it over and over again. 
know who you are know who you are know who you are let's move on because of time number three the third who who will welcome you when you get there who will welcome you when you get there who will welcome you when you get there let me tell you something the people you meet first when you enter any country determines your destiny in that country now i'm telling you the truth because the quality of advice they will give you is the one they know if someone if you go into a country now and the person you meet is a security person or working on the ground or cleaning dead body working in care home or is a, a taxi driver once you come to say, ah, there's taxi, oh, even who can get taxi, that's the only thing they will tell you. They will never tell you that now that you are here, these are, these are the options because they don't know better. So that person you are going to meet, what quality of life do they have? But there are people you meet that once you can say, no, 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 guys, you can't go down that route. Once you go down that you remain at the bottom. I will advise you, look for two, three thousand, apply for this course. Do this course. Within six months, you have a certification. You start as an intern here. Within, and before you know it, because of the people they met that gave them the right kind of information that gave them the right kind of understanding all of a sudden since we shift i was speaking in florida years ago and after i finished speaking the guy walked up to me and said you know i love your preaching. i love i love your preaching man i love your preaching but you know you know someone i'm an ex-con you know i'm an ex-con you know and nobody wants to employ an ex-con ex-con ex he was just talking ex-con ex-con as if he's in labor so i asked him a question you are an ex-convict. Nobody wants to employ you. Why can't you employ yourself? I say, why must you think that somebody should start a job and employ you? I said, do you know that? Whether you... I said, me, I have a company in this country. And I'm employing people in your country. And I'm not in your country. And I have businesses and investment here. And you, you say, because you are an ex and you are an American. I'm an ex -con. I say, did you go to register a company? They say, you can't register because you are an ex -con. I said, because when you want to register a company, they won't ask you whether you are escort or not. But when you want to get a job, the person that wants to give you a job must do their due diligence. But if it's your life, go get a job. Go get a company registered. Open a computer account and think of what you can do. That's right, guy. You're, 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 you're wise, man. You're wise, man. Are you, I said, so are there no things you used to do that you can turn into a business? Say, you know what? That's true, man. I used to do lawn, you know, do lawn mowing, you know, Hoover. You know, a mon, lawn, da, 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 da. I said, so start and send out Ivy and begin to do that. Within two years, he registered the company. He was able to employ four people. By the time I went back there two years later, he was doing well. He has started doing lawn mowing, landscaping, and all those stuff. But now, what changed the information he got? There are people that have relocated. They have been on the guy. Somebody else goes, no, 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 no. You can do um, internet security. You can do this course within six weeks. You can do this course within... The, and... The kind of people you meet matters. So don't go there and be limited by the people you meet. Hello? Time. My first trip to the UK was in 1997. The person I went to meet, by the time I landed in his house, he was living in a council flat. Even the lift was smelling of urine as we were going up to his floor. When I entered the place, the guy was already telling me some things, this and that and that and that and that. And that gave me a clear understanding of what I'm telling you. So we started speaking. Oh, so if somebody wants to stay here, if they say, oh, you can do this, you can join this, you can do that. He was saying all kinds of stuff. The conference I went for, a day before the end of the conference, bam, I meet a guy. Wow, long time. Ah, you are here. We were all together growing up as young christians he's been in the uk i met him now these are two different set of people and he told me where are you say ah working on shame cancel flat no 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 ah i bought the house come to my house i moved to his house the same discussion i had with this other guy i started having with him and i started getting different answers in the same london the guy said no 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 tell us about it ah oh my god my for the next 10 years the guy was telling me as at 1997 that he does not use credit card, he doesn't have debts, everything. Ah, 
and this other one says you can't survive here oh, you must have credit card you must and this one and i still know the two of them till now the other one is still in that class, council flats is still there this other one has bought like five houses he's a billionaire he pounds he's my friend i know him now so i'm telling you who are you going to meet there so the fact that somebody is helping you you will arrive in their house does not mean you must use them as the picture of your destiny for that nation you must begin to seek superior ideas so that you will not remain at the bottom and think that that's all there is because you know when you don't know the truth you think that everybody is a fake person how do they make all this money nobody the same money they try to make we will not feel made no there is a way to make money legally and do it well so who will welcome you when you arrive in the, in the country not the one that an illegal person will come and welcome you somebody that fbi is already looking for and they say don't worry don't have me on the water airport <laughs> i can't come into the airport Thomas Jade cross the bridge to the other side <laughs> because he doesn't have documents <laughs> he's afraid that they will capture him on camera and he's driving and he's uh, passing corner corner streets <laughs> who is your point person what do they do what is their own level and stand in the nation how much do they know about the nation and the opportunities that there are? Because there are some people, all they know is what they know. They have been in a country for 10 years. They don't know anything apart from the location they are in. There are people like that. They, are not, they don't explore for any knowledge. They are just survivor mentalists. And if you go there, you remain like that. So all these are vital consideration because who you know and those you meet first will go a long way in affecting things. Let's wrap up with number four. Who is helping you? I hope you know that it's very expensive to travel. To relocate to any country now, depending on whatever format you decide to use, is minimum, minimum of 5 million. <coughs> you're talking 5, 10, 15 million. If you're a family of four, you're talking like 25, 30 million. No, because many of you don't know. Even tickets now, economy ticket, go and find out how much is economy ticket times four people. So, ticket alone. Uh -huh. Just economy. We are not talking no upper class or middle class or premium. Just economy for family of four. So, if you have 10 million, 15 million, 20 million to invest in relocation, are you telling me there is nothing you can put 10 million, 5 million, 15 million into a year that can change your story? Because as bad as you people keep saying Nigeria is, crisis creates opportunities that bad 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 is actually an opportunity to make money because instead of you analyzing the problem be a part of solving the problem and money flows in exchange for problem that you solve so when it comes to the money because many of you they'll say don't worry do you know that banks are even doing it now 419 you know nigerian banks many of them are 419 banks they are now arranging uh, accounts for people. Yeah, even banks are arranging accounts for people. For you, they will say they will borrow you money to go abroad, to go to school. They won't borrow you money to do something here. They will say, bring your father, bring your mother. But they are borrowing money. They have opened different portals now for international travel. Then you will now say somebody will put money in your account so that you will just use it to enter. And once you get there, you begin to work to pay school fees. I can't tell you how many people have gone that after year one, they are stranded. They are now trying to defer admission. Before you know it, they entered into illegality. All kinds of things that people will not tell you. Listing and listing well. There are many people out there that want to return to Nigeria. They have suffered enough, but shame no feel let them come back. Some of them, there is nothing to come back to. They have sold all their property. And all the pictures you see on social media, they are posing beside the car. Look, when you travel, you don't need money to buy a car. Hello? You can buy car and pay for seven years, pay for ten years. So don't be fooled by all those cars. You can go to auction and get a car. At... No. So who is helping you with the visa and travel process? Are they genuine? Because most of you, it is when you get to Mutala Muhammad, you discover your visa is fake. No, no, no. You will now discover that ah, they will just put the ah, no, who did this to you? And the person is gone. So they will tell you they have done. So who are they genuine? Are they giving you vital and accurate information of what is really on ground? I hope you know that many of these supposed travel consultants they have never left Nigeria before. 
Many of them have never gone anywhere. They go and study online and be deceiving you. Oh, they are, they are very good country. Online, online is gone. Nigerians come back. Eh? You share one bed. There's work there. We went to Jerusalem and we saw some people. The guy was telling me, that's a Nigerian me, South African Mugbawole, Eromilo, he said, I'm from Nigeria. I came in through South Africa. That they told him that there is work in Israel. But Israel. <laughs> and you left South Africa. Pretoria and Mwasa. When he said, what are you doing? Ah, in Ubulawa. He said, he's just coming out of the farm after like 60 days. You know all this farm, in, you know all this movie you see where they have like plantation where they do wine. They just lock them up in the farm like slaves. They are feeding them and using them like they say. He, he just came out after like 60 something days. That you see how I can help him. He's been trying to collect so that he can just get money to go back to or come back to Nigeria. No, I'm telling you. <laughs> have they been to that country before? Do they know the real things that you need to have? I think I told you last week of the guy that left Nigeria, got to uh, Ukraine, and died the same day. Yeah, because of uh, he didn't wear correct clothes. Many of you, let me tell you something. If I tell you about snow, there is no way I can explain it to you. The highest explanation is we go put you inside freezer and cover you. But lately, it's still not an explanation. You see, you have to see it to believe it. I'm telling you, nobody can explain snow to you. The, the best we can do is to say, why we'll lock you inside freezer for one hour. That's the best, but it's still not compared to snow. And let me tell you, many of these shoes you people are wearing, that you think you are wearing shoes, you are not wearing shoes. All these are designer shoes. When you are inside winter and snow enter, I have been in London before. I have cried in Paris before. I cried as in human being, elderly man of God, and they cry like this. Because the London one, I thought I had correct leather shoe. You know how you go pride like when I just saw that my leg was not, you know, as I'm here now, I'm moving my toe so I can feel it. I just saw that my toe could not separate. <laughs> I just I'm just sensing that ah, something is wrong. Ah. So at the point I'm like, ah, my leg is like ah, and I'm every ah. I now got to so I say, please, I don't know. The, the guy said, oh man, you're wearing the wrong shoes, man. <laughs> you're wearing the wrong shoes, man. One other guy said, no, 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 remove the shoe. You're going to heat it up or you're, you're, you're going to get into a psychiatric. He was talking one grammar. That's how they remove my shoe, put it there. It helping me to put out what I'm telling you. Paris, you know, Paris people, French, French people, they can be very terrible because they believe that their French language is superior to English language. So a French man, even when they understand English, if you can't speak... Le Francais, le pra, le pra. Go do the. Now food, I go look for. <laughs> I left the hotel thinking I would just see food here. Oh, next one. You know, they have all this bread that is very hard, no food. Oh, no, no, pizza area, pizza area. That's why they walk up for I walk up. I don't know road to hotel. <laughs> And all I had in my pocket was dollar, pounds, and naira. So I kept speaking, please, hotel, this hotel, you tax the card, all of them were just good. No, 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 no. I was there for almost one hour. Nobody was answering me. I, look, I called Nigeria. Our administrator is still alive. His name was Pastor Richard. I called her, I was crying over here. I was crying. I said, Pastor Richard, I, this is bad. This, nobody is answering me. <laughs> I was crying because all my body has frozen. I didn't carry the clothes. I thought I would just go down, get something to eat, and return. After a while, I saw some people that were black. So I get to say, My people, is there any? <laughs> 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 is there any of you that is from Africa, Nigeria, Ghana? You say, hey, Ghanaian. I say, Akwaba. <laughs> you have no idea. Huh? That's how the guy entered Ukraine, got to the hostel. He didn't wake up the next morning. 
because the the, the, the the eating system was not and they didn't tutor him on the kind of clothes to wear so listen and listen well to jackpot or not is a personal issue so the ball is in your courts but remember that good idea is not always God's idea and before you decide to join make sure you do your due diligence because my name is Olumide Oladapo Emmanuel I am your pastor but I have decided at this level of my life that I will not allow people to use me counseling is free but consultancy attracts a fee I've spent three weeks to help you. I've been teaching you the truth, giving you guidance. When and if you decide to jack up and you get into trouble and you are now calling for counseling or prayer, it won't be counseling or prayer. It will be consultancy. We'll send you an invoice and charge you to be able to answer you. Because now we have given you free. If you don't use the wisdom you have gotten now to plan your life, may the Lord help you. We're going to welcome the Lifeline Choir. They're going to lead us and just minister to us. And then we'll go to the main session for this morning as Dr. Cosmos will be blessing us. Welcome the best choir in the world. Hallelujah. Oh, the presence of your glory and the glory of your presence in my life in your life in our lives be glorified lord we thank you be glorified be glorified can i have a witness in the house this morning Me. 
giving thanks hallelujah you may please be seated today is the beginning of the global kingdom world conference 2022 thankfully tomorrow is a public holiday so you have no reason to miss tomorrow morning tomorrow morning we start the ministers and leaders conference and from tomorrow morning to wednesday morning is going to be an amazing amazing time we're going to be having ministering to us um, from tomorrow morning then tuesday and wednesday we're going to have um, uh, reverend tony akiemi will be ministering to us um, apostle wale oladi will be ministering to us in the morning pastor jerry Aze will be ministering to us Pastor Bojo Yema Day will be ministering to us. Pastor Mrs. Tinoe Johnson will be ministering to us. And I'm going to be ministering also every morning. It's going to be an amazing, amazing time in the morning sessions. In the evening, I'm going to be speaking in the first session. There's an amazing series I'm going to be doing from tomorrow night, part one to three, Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night. You don't want to miss it. And then from tomorrow night, we're going to be having our speakers. Uh, Jerry Eze will be in the house tomorrow night. And then we'll take you from there. So, and then we'll hand over to the fathers. And then Bishop Michael Conco will be wrapping up for us on Wednesday night. So you don't want to miss any of these conferences. And I believe very strongly that God has brought this meeting at such a time as this to position us for great things that will begin to happen even as we move forward this morning our opening speaker that will be speaking to us this morning i'll also be speaking to us in the evening at the dinner is one of the greatest ambassadors of the kingdom within the nation that has made the kingdom and the nation proud on a global scale and um, his life and um, his journey has been an inspiration to me as an individual for decades. And um, I was privileged to be on the same platform with him um, sometime last year, I believe. And I said, no, 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 this is an opportunity. I've been looking forward to meeting you. He said, me too, I've been looking for I said, no, it's me, I've been looking for you, sir. And um, my wife and I, we, we had the privilege to visit him at his home. And a relationship has begun. And I believe very strongly that there's so much to learn from him and so that's why tonight I'm just so excited because to meet with people like this, to be able to sit down with them, ask questions, and get secrets, it's an opportunity no one should miss. So this morning is going to be speaking to us as an apostle, and then tonight he'll be speaking to us as a kingdom ambassador. Praise the name of Jesus. So um, the multimedia will do an introduction, but it's his first time in Calvary Bible Church. So... Once the multimedia is done, you know how we do it. We stand up and we celebrate him to know that we're happy to have him in the house. So multimedia, over to you. Dr. Cosmas Maduka is the founder, president, CEO of Coscharis Group. He started Coscharis Motors as a one-man business and over the years has transformed the organization into an indigenous conglomerate with diverse interests in agriculture, banking, 
manufacturing, ICT, and automobile sector of the Nigerian economy. From a very humble beginning, Dr. Cosmas Maduka has been able to build a colossal business empire which cuts across almost every critical sector of the nation's economy, from importation and distribution to manufacturing, logistics, information technology, agriculture, real estate, and car assembly. Dr. Maduka is today regarded as success personified as he had become a resource facilitator in youth empowerment seminars and conferences where he had strived to educate the generality of the people that one's background does not determine one's destiny. Rather, it is your mindset and attitude, past actions and inactions and reactions to the events and circumstances around you. In recognition of his outstanding qualities, experience and contributions to the education, business and commercial landscape, he was awarded Honorary Doctor of Business Administration by the University of Nigeria in 2003 and Distinguished Fellowship of the Nigeria Law School in 2004. He is a Fellow of African Business School, member of Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, as well as Institute of Directors Nigeria. In September 2012, he was conferred with the National Honors of the Commander of the Order of the Niger CON by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He is a member of the prestigious Lagos Business School Advisory Board and also a guest lecturer at the University of Lagos Business School Lectures Series. He is also a member of the Board of Directors, Namdi Azikiwe University Business School. On October 21st, 2016, he was again honored by Afe Babalola University, Adoikiti, with another Honorary Doctor of Business Administration. He's an alumni of Harvard Business School Executive Education Program, November 2009. Dr. Maduka loves God and does not feel ashamed to profess Christ wherever he is and whenever opportunity calls. He is a deacon in the local Christian assembly in Lagos and is married to Mrs. Charity Maduka with five children. With Jesus' joy in our heart and a shout of praise in our mouths, let's make welcome Dr. Cosmas Maduka. God bless you. God bless you. He is my everything. He is my all. He is my everything. Both great and small. Pastor here, my very good friend, Brother Olumide Emmanuel, for inviting me. I met him first that I could recollect in Dr. Akintayo's place, and uh, we exchanged number, and from then, friendship were born. And by the grace of God, I am here this morning. I'm under expectation for this weekend meeting and this upcoming week 
be under expectation because you can only receive what you expect. If you come in a meeting to criticize, the devil will show you a lot of things you will see to criticize. If you come with faith in your heart to receive healing, God will meet you at your point of need. You create what you become from your thinking process. Be in the right thinking mind and be under expectation that God will meet you at your point of need, even this morning. Before I take my scripture, I want to sing hymn 92, Speak My Lord. Speak my Lord. Speak my Lord. Speak and now be quick to answer thee. Speak my Lord. Speak my Lord. Speak and I will answer. Lord, send me. Hear the Lord of harvest with calling who will go and walk for me today who will bring to me the lost and dying who will point to them the narrow way what you say church speak my lord speak my Lord, speak and I'll be quick to answer thee. Speak, my Lord, speak, my Lord, speak and I will answer. Lord, send me. When the coal of fire touch the prophet, making him as pure as pure can be. When the voice of God say, Who go for us? Then he quickly answer, Here am I. Is that your condition today? Speak, my Lord. Speak, my Lord. Speak, and I'll be quick to answer thee. Speak, my Lord. Woo! Speak, my Lord. Speak, and I will answer. Lord, send me. Me now in sin and shame at the church listen to their sad and bitter cry hasten brother hasten sister to the rescue quickly answer here am I send me what do you say speak my Lord Speak, my Lord. Speak, and I'll be quick to answer thee. Speak, my Lord. Speak, my Lord. Speak, and I will answer, Lord. Soon the time of reaping will be over. Soon will gather to the harvest home. May the Lord of harvest smile upon us. May we hear him say, bless a child well done. What do you say? Speak, my Lord. Speak, my Lord. Ooh. Answer me. Speak, my Lord. Speak, my Lord. Speak, and I will answer. Lord, send me. 
Oh yes, Father Lord, that's our position this morning, Lord. Lord, one word from you will make all the difference, Lord. Take my mind out of the way, Lord. May you drop down this morning, Lord. Let the mind of Christ, the person of Jesus Christ, oh God, appear in our midst, Father Lord God. Oh dear Heavenly Father, where can we do? What can we do, Lord? Speak, Lord, like Isaiah. Let us say, here am I, send me, Lord. Like Jeremiah, Lord. Oh God, we see millions and sin and shame are dying. Lord, you are looking for somebody today. Like you said in the book of Ezekiel, who will cry for the abomination that is happening in the land? Who will cry for the sins of the people? Oh God, and point them to that narrow way. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that I'm in this church, Calvary Church, Lord. This church, oh God, that name for that hope that is in us, Lord. For we knew it was at Calvary that you took all our pains, you bore all our diseases, that you transform our life. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray, oh God, like those disciples to Emmaus, Father, as we are in this service, Father, when this service is all over, Lord, dear Heavenly Father, these are supposed to be disciples, these are your people, but they have missed the course. They didn't know what the scripture said again. They were backsliding on their way back, complaining and grumbling, but they were discussing about you. And whenever you are mentioned, you appear in the midst of the people. When they started talking about you, you join in the conversation and say, what is this thing that you are discussing and you are sorrowful? Why are you having a pity spirit? Why is your spirit so downcasted? And they begin to rebuke you. Are you a stranger in the land? You didn't know what happened? This Jesus we thought is going to come and save us from the powers of the Romans and he the wicked soldiers of the Jews took and crucified. All our hope is shattered. Lord, you never joined pity spirit. You pointed them back to the word. You say, what did the scripture say concerning him? You took them back to the word and you begin to expand the word and their heart be begin to lighten up. And Lord, when it was becoming an evening time, like the hour and the years we are living in it, the evening time of this age, you will never force yourself on anybody because you are a gentle Holy Spirit. You wanted to see who is interested about you. You behave like you are still going forward. And they say, please don't go, Lord. Abide with us, come. And when you came in, they brought you the bread the word, the bread of life that we are holding in our heart now oh dear God to break the bread and the scripture recorded by the breaking of the bread their eyes pop open and they knew it was you and you vanish in their sight oh father lord God I'm holding in my hand that same bread of life lord may you come down and break it for us this morning lord may we hear from you lord so that when this service is all over, we will, this, we will make a comment like those disciples on their way to Emmaus. Because as they were going back, they said, ah, didn't our heart burn within us as he spoke to us in the way? What happened that we didn't recognize him? Because they were in a backsliding state. But when you opened the word, they came to recognition that that was the Lord. Father, do the same to them today because you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you serve anybody in the Bible days, you can serve another person today. If you meet the same condition, if you heal a sick in the Bible days, if another person meet the same condition, you will heal him today. If you open the eyes of a blind in the Bible days, if another person meet the same condition, you will open his eye today. Otherwise, you made a mistake when you did the first one. But there is no mistake with you. I bless my soul on this word that said Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Lord, do the same this morning to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be seated. Hallelujah. We have a very short time, you know. Um, but uh, forgive me uh, if, you, if you think I play too long. I, that's how I like to do it. That's what I believe. That's how, you know, I got result in my life. I have a title this morning. 
I'm titling the thing I'm going to say to you now, maybe in the next 15 or 20 minutes, because I knew I was having only 45 minutes to be here. I title it, Take Responsibility. <clears throat> My inspiration for this message is preparation time. You got to prepare. If you want to have to take responsibility, and for you to do that, you have to prepare. My subject for this morning teaching is the power of planning and a change. The power of planning and a change. I go all over me again, take responsibility, title, inspiration, preparation, time, subject, the power of planning and a change. I take my first scripture from this book of 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And it says, If my people, which are called by my name, listen, it's conditional, shall humble themselves, first of all, you come before God, He is present with humility. Get down from your high horses. Whatever you think you are, the angels start afar off. Is God such a holy God? And they are worshiping, they is unapproachable. They stay afar and chant about his holiness. And if his people that are called by his name, people he put his name upon them, if they recognize that they have to confess with reverence. And the highest act of reverence is obedience. If you really want to reverence God in your life, you got to learn to obey God. The highest form of this, uh, of this, uh, um, of uh, the highest form of uh, disrespect is disobedient. When you are living obedience, you are in line, you are in harmony. If my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, the humility has to come first before the prayer. Not and seek my face, you got to sort it, you got to look, desire it to get his favor, his face, and turn from their wicked ways. Repentance is acknowledgement that you are wrong. It's not because you cry, it's just accept and said, I'm wrong. Admit, God wants you to admit there is a power that can take you away from it. If my people that are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Church, the salvation of this country is in your hand and is on my hand. And that is the recipe. God gave us from his word. The land will not be healed until the people of God fall on their faces in repentance. God will forgive us and then heal our land. It is the healing from God that will make the difference. So, prayer and fasting open the way for forgiveness blessing and restoration. If we are going to claim the promises and blessings of God for restoration and outpouring of his spirit, we must first fulfill the condition God has set forth. There must be first a brokenness, a humbling, a breaking of our spiritual pride, our human spirit, and self-righteousness through fasting and prayer. Psalm 103 verse 7 said, He made known his ways unto Moses, his art to the children of Israel. You don't know what a man or a woman is doing until you find the condition of their mind, what is in their mind. God revealed his mind to Moses. But the children of Israel saw the signs and wonders, the manner, the miracle. They are, that's what they look out for. But Moses knows the mind of God. 
When you know the mind of God, it creates a relationship of an intimacy that only heaven will recognize. Hallelujah. And that's where we want to get to find what is the mind of God in this hour. It is not about the hand of God, his power, but the mind of God to create the intimacy of a relationship. Many of us Christians today still look at the surface, the outward appearance of God's power as an indicator and sign of the great outpouring God has promised in this last day. It has become too bad even now that we have even really depended on the outward appearance so much that until people will, you know, recognize the, the amount of the quality of your Holy Spirit by the, the, the model of car you drive. We've gotten it wrong. We need to follow the Bible principle. The foundation is the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Not the outward appearance, even though that is good. However, the real sign will be across the nations of the earth. The people of God begin to fall on their faces before God to repent, to confess their sins before God and to one another, and begin to turn from their sins that we have allowed to creep into the church. Another major indicator of this great time outpouring of the Holy Spirit will be a major move of Christians from different churches towards the unity of the Spirit. We are so divided today. You know, we are so divided. We are so divided. Is Christ divided? The answer is no. When we begin to see Christian leaders coming together in new unity, you will know that it is a sign of the great outpouring God has promised in this end time. After God's people begin to fast and pray, then will God hear and will be jealous for the land and pity his people. You'll find this in Joel 2, 18. After God's people have begun to weep, to mourn, and repent, will come a time of great rejoicing, for the Lord will do great things. You'll find it in Joel 2.21. After God's people begin to fast and pray and repent, then will heaven open and God will pour the former and the latter rain. The Holy Spirit will pour out upon all flesh. You'll find that in Joel 2.22 and 28. After God's people humble themselves in fasting and prayer, then will come the promise of restoration. God will restore all that, all things Satan has stolen. Then will come an abundance. Then, then God's people will be satisfied. You'll find that in Joel 2, 24-27. What are the circumstances, church, you are facing right now? I don't know. Many people are going through things. Are there situations in your life in which you must hear from God? In which you must do, in which you do not just know what to do or even how to pray anymore? Do not use your carnal weapon. Fight back. Pick up your weapon of prayer and fasting and use them. My advice in what we have seen that is going on in the world today is that we will go back to the basis and follow the principle that are laid down in the day of Pentecost that have been here. Are you at the point in your life that it seems that heaven are at brass? Are you and God has forgotten you. Has yet not and, and have not heard you. You have not had your cry for help. Do not give up. Do not listen to Satan's lie. Pick up your weapon of prayer and fasten and use them. Fight back and take your victory. Is there a growing hunger 
in your heart to know Christ in his fullness. Not like babies. Know God by his power, but do not know the mind of God on the issue. To be conformed into the image of Christ. So you'll be integrated because God is one. To be drawn into a close relationship with him. Pick up your weapon of prayer and fasting and use them. I am a great believer that there is nothing in the word of God as a self-made man or woman. Don't believe it. Because if God did not make you, you can never make yourself. But you've got to fight back. For God has made us a little creator. Genesis 1, 26 and 28 said, Be fruitful. It's a command on a potential. God is saying, I put something in you. Bring it out. Potential is what you are capable of being, but you are not yet. There's something God deposited in each and every one of us. There is no ungifted human being, including people who are blind or retarded. Nobody is in the face of this earth without a gift. When you find your gift and you serve it to humanity, if you are looking for money, money will be the thing that will follow you. But until you do, until then, you will be experimenting with your life. B is an active verb. It is a command on a potential. It's saying, I put something in you. Fight back and bring it out. Remain in obedient. I say, therefore, that we have all that we require to create another world around us. God made every one of us little creator. You can create another world. You live in it. Not regardless of what is happening around you. Little Lily, push. I encourage you to push. Like Joshua, we have to fight because we have been prepared by the word of God to take on the battle. If you know that God promised Joshua, every place the foot of your print match, that have I given to you. But Joshua had to fight for every inch of that land to be able to get it. Jesus said in St. John chapter 15, verse 1, My father is a, I am divine. And my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he take it away. But every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it that it will bring much fruit. And verse 3 of that chapter 15 of St. John said, Now you are clean. You are clean. You are made clean through the words that I'm speaking unto you. In St. John 6, 9, it said, It is the spirit that quickened the flesh, profited nothing. The words you are hearing, they are spirit and life. Church, you got to protect and guide your heart. You got to know who do I listen to. Because your heart is your spiritual womb. You cannot open it up for any feeble. Just like as a, a, a decent moral lady, don't open her body to anybody. Because the only way you can take in is when you open up. You can't close your leg and take in. Spiritually and naturally, they all work on the same principle. So if you want God to deposit something in you, you must come in his presence with open heart. But then you need to know who do you submit to to be able to come in there. Because your pastor, spiritually, is your husband. He's supposed to pour the mind of God into your heart by the word that he's bringing. And the little thing I hear here this morning, I can tell you God 
had gone ahead of you to prepare you a prosperity. Amen. Look at those instructions in righteousness. Just to make sure any true child of God who want to listen will listen and profit himself. But you can say, all these things is taken. Let me go. If not dead, I beat out there. I go go. Good luck to you. I am divine. Ye are the branches. You are clean. Bible said the incoming word of God drives away every darkness from the heart. So you got to know what do you listen to? What music do you listen to? What channel do you go to? I'm sorry to disappoint some of you. That's why people like me do not have te television. I don't have television in my house. It's not a doctrine. So it's not a, 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 a deeper life or anything. It's my choice. Because God didn't make any of us a robot. He gave us a will to activate our choices. But people thought, oh, it's a sight that I have my will. I can do what I like. Yes. But your will is the most dangerous gift God has given you. Because you can use it to choose against him. And still, he didn't want to make you a robot. He allowed you to express that will. So you know it is your choice. Any condition you find yourself in life is a choice you make. But we live in a society, an age that is irresponsible, that want to pass blame. You look for who to blame for decisions you made that never take you anywhere. I have a choice. I came in contact with the person of Jesus Christ when I was under 15. I was 14 years plus. And this revolutionized my life. I've been on this journey for 48 years. And somebody asked me one time, did you have any regret? I said, yes. He said, what is regret you have in life? I said, the 14 years I lived before I become a Christian. If I can retrieve it and knew what I know from the day I was born, I will, it would have made a whole lot of things. And when this happened, God was gracious to me that I met him at a tender age of my life. So I never had the opportunity to experiment with my life. I had a clear sense of direction from the age of 15 where I wanted to be in life. I was instructed in the word of God. My heart was open like virgin. Everything that is happening, I was taking them in. I read in the book of Habakkuk that if I have a dream, I should not have it in my head, I should write it down. So before I turned 15, I wrote five things down I wanted to do before 20. One of them is that the first on the list, surprisingly, and people have asked me why, the first on my list is that I want to marry before 20. <laughs> Not after 20. I want to have a wife before 20 years. And somebody asked me, why did you, why was that important? I said, because I didn't want to fool around. I don't want this, uh, I'm dating this girl today, tomorrow I'm dating the other one. All this foolishness. I, because you, if you have a vision, your vision gives you a sense of direction. Your vision helps you to know where you are going. So, so you, you don't go to a bookshop and start looking for any book to buy. Your vision makes you to live a narrow life. It directs you what to do. I wrote, and I knew if I start fooling around with this boy, it will it will be an inhibition to where I want to be. So I wrote down to marry before 20. The second thing is to have a child by 21. Yes! On my honor. The third thing is to have a car before 23. And the fourth on the list is to be a millionaire before 25. And listen, I hung it on the, on, on, in my room on, the bed, on top of my bed. Before I sleep, after prayer, I look at those things, anoint my spirit with it, and I go to bed. In my dream, I see myself in Japan. I see myself uh, running a multinational. Because the things you put your mind to, they, they are the things that are coming to you. Why some of us are where we are is that we finish watching pornography and we sleep. So when you go to near, it says, spirit come to make love with you. It's the thing you have anointed your spirit with that comes back to you. 
Because you sow into your life and what you sow is what you reap. You don't believe it. My uncle, who I worked for in Lagos, I served him for six years. After six years, he gave me 200 naira in 1976. 200 naira was my stewardship for five years. That did not deter me. I went with my senior brother. The most important thing is that by this time, I'm already a Christian. And I had clear sense where I wanted to be. He, he was angry with me for the same principle that I'm teaching you. These principles are not personal. They are it, it, this, Jesus used the same principle. Moses used the same principle to succeed. You cannot violate principle. Principles are law. You can speak in tongue, do everything you are saying. If you violate principle, you pay for it. Let me tell you, I've never seen a vision in my life. But I can prophesy to you, if you jump out of 10 story building, thus says the Lord, you will die. <laughs> if you don't believe me, try it and see whether you will die. And see whether my prophecy will come to pass. Why? Because I violated principle. You are sitting in the seat you sat now. It is a law that makes you sit down. Otherwise, you will be floating. You are under an atmosphere where gravity is in control. And therefore, you can... There is an equation, things that balances you to remain there. Don't, don't, don't have this kind of faith to do everything you want. I'm forgetting the principle. The command to Joshua is that this book of law to not depart in your heart of you. My uncle gave me 200 naira. My silver brother said, Let's, I should give it back to him. Let us go. I asked him, I said, do you have anyone to give me when we get home? He says, no. <laughs> I turned to my uncle and I looking eyeball to eyeball. There is confidence that comes in you when you are a Christian. I said, uncle, I served you well. I didn't stole from you. Why should you give me 200 naira? He said, that's what I have. I said, God had in the heart of Pharaoh that he might show his might in Egypt. Five years from today, go and write it down. If you had who I am, you, your, your, your head would be spinning. He shook my uncle. There are things you do not expect 15 years boy to say. He turned to me and said, I know you will succeed. I said, thank you. <laughs> and I left and teamed up with my senior brother. We create a company called Madeka Brothers. In another two, three, four years, we started differing. In a, not two years after, four months, we started differing in ideology. Because God's word called for total separation from every unbelief. My senior brother was a Catholic. What is the issue? If you I have my books here, I came with some of my books. You can, you can get it after the service. It's called From Triumph, From Trial to Triumph. The story of Cosmos and Charity Madeka, the Cosmos history. You can read it. I have it here. The ambassador Odon that wrote this biograph, I went to interview my senior brother, and he told him the same thing. Why? Those days, if I'm going to church, I take one naira. One naira was a lot of money. You can imagine, I have capital of 200 naira. I'm taking one naira out of it to put in offering. My senior brother said, you cannot be taking one naira. That in our Catholic church, we give 10 kobo. I said, Pius, you drink beer. And I drank Coca-Cola. The one naira I put in, in offering, compensate for the beer you got. He said, it doesn't, that, this my logic is not interested in it. Let's separate. I said, praise the Lord. You know why? God's word called for total separation from every unbelief. We parted way. The rest is history. I was in church. Before 18 years, I'm living in three bedrooms apartment of my own, not my father's house. And I furnish it, everything. The next thing is to take a wife. And I was in a church like you are here, and people are singing in the choir, all these beautiful sisters. There's one voice that is distant from everybody. I can, I can, hear, I can hear this voice clear. It, it didn't mix up with every other person. I lift my left hand up. I say, Lord, I claim her in the name of Jesus Christ. It didn't come easy. I took a gunshot for it. Because if my glamour is as bad as it is today, you are hearing. 
eh? you need to know what it was 40 something years ago that that time i was using cutlass to cut it then they say they say they 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 say yeah and and it was because english word is too complicated for me you know my mother never spoke vernacular to me i lost my father when i was four four years and my mother spoke you know uh, spoke vernacular he never spoke grammar to me if you were discussing Igbo language you will know i'm a original Igbo man <laughs> but i never allowed that condition to defy me no the best i stopped in what the four corner wall you call school is elementary three. while many of you are pursuing doctorate degree doctorate degree has been pursuing me i have i have four of them and some of them i rejected because if you want to give me an honorary degree, I want to know what did you have achieved to give me. The first one I accepted was UN, uh, uh, UNN, University of Nigeria. The second was Afebe Balola. The third was Michael Opala University. I have them, one of them. I'm not, I'm not looking for it, but degrees pursuing me. Because they asked Henry Ford, who is an educated man. Henry Ford said, an educated man or a woman is a person that will organize his thought into productivity. <laughs> so if you, if you don't believe I am educated, you cannot quarrel with my results. Because they will stare you in the face. So by 18 years, I was living in three bedrooms, apartment of my own. Not my part. And I spoke to this young lady. He asked me, where am I taking her to? Sisters, don't make mistakes because I can say some of these things. I didn't have 50,000 naira in my pocket. Then you marry a man that has no job. If you marry a brother that has no work, you are not spiritual. <laughs> Is it a contradiction? No. But you can sit him down and say, where are you going? Tell me, where are we going? My wife asked me that question, and I shared with her where I want to go, where I'm going. And he said, okay, I support you, we'll make it. God sent a woman in your life to help you achieve where you want to be. So, that's why the Bible says she will be your helpmate. But if the lady appears in your life and you have no job, you create confusion in her head. Because he comes to help you and find that you are doing nothing. So, what is he going to help? If she has PhD, whatever she does, you will build complex over it because you didn't have something to do. So you say, I, I, I mean, you went to school, then I will kill myself. No, you better go and get a job first. So my wife asked me, where am I taking her? I said, honey, this is where we will be in another 10 years, in another 5 years, this is where we're going to be. And he said, let's go make it. To the fact, I took my wife to the altar on September 23rd, 1978. 1978 and i will turn 20 years in december 24th 1970 three months to the time the first mission I accomplished i wrote i marked it so this young man you see standing here has been married for 44 years so quite a number of you i should be i can be your father so you better listen to me and give me your undivided attention because I'm not speaking from intellectual conception. I have experience. I'm not telling you what I read in uh, anybody's book. But what God had shown me his capability is. Young people, don't miss it. Because you make yourself when you are young. If you miss it, they listen to me. If you want to somersault, you must somersault between 12 and 19. If you get to 25 and try to somersault, you get a spinal cord injury. <laughs> because your body is not flexible anymore to do it. So, it is not just there is time for everything. There is a timing for everything. You make yourself, when you are young, statistics prove that 86% of successful people happen between the age of 12 and 25. By 28, you're already in a borderline. I know some people make it at 40, at 60, but very rare. It's like a pyramid. The higher it goes, the thinner it becomes. So if you really want to be anything in life, you need to begin to plan your life. 
early. I got wife, made love to my wife. I wanted a child. But God knew these two babies cannot be making baby. It will be a catastrophe. So he closed the womb. <laughs> so my first son didn't come until 26. Because it's not everything you plan that will happen exactly the way you planned it. But you, need, you must have a plan. And that plan has to be on paper. Well, I've already started doing a little much better. I passed Oka Road by Mandela's. I saw a Passat car, blue color, with a dent in the front bumper put for sale. I check it, it has 3,200 kilometers. I negotiated it and closed the deal. And before I turned 23, I own a car of my own, not my father's own. I own a car. I have my own car. The goal is still very clear where I wanted to be in life. <laughs> Many times, we parents are the dream killers, including myself. Because it's not because I'm teaching you here. Because I have four boys. I have first two boys, a girl in the middle, another two boys. And they all want to drive motorbike because I'm a biker. Even today, I have bikes that I drive. I say, no, 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 you wound yourself. You break your leg. Why do I not allow them to learn how to drive bike? Let them break their leg. It, will, it, will, it won't be at the end of it. Didn't I fall when I'm learning? But parents are too protective and want to relieve their life through their children. My only son that drives motorcycle today is the one that disobeyed me. <laughs> but today we go together to go and ride and have a fun. We, we drive together. But he didn't learn it with my approval. And that's why I tell people, you will never follow normal road and discover new road. Sometimes you need to miss road to find road. And when you find that road, you will never miss it. There may not be road there, and you will find that this is a dead point. But experience would have teach you. So, but if you are guiding you and everything, you must do it like this. Who, 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 how did anybody teach you how to walk? You need to get up many times and fall and, until your leg is strong on the ground and you know how to walk. Listen to me. You know, it's unfortunate that I think my time is almost up. It's finished, yeah. So, you know, if you like, I close now. I can continue. Okay. Thank you. One day, my wife was in the front of my car. My mother at the back, and we were traveling, going somewhere. When these things come on me, because Bible, I was a young man. I was under 25. The, the baptism of Holy Ghost does things to you. Young men, see, see. You can see. You can see. So when you see, if you have a wife, you tell her what you see. So when you are discouraging, that same spirit come upon your wife because she will prophesy. She begins to tell you, did you say God tell you to do this? You will do it. If you say God told you, we will do it. So that's what the sister has done. She prophesied back to her husband because the Holy Spirit affects every one of us differently. On the old man is dream. Ah, I wish this thing could be done. That's what dream is. But you are too old already that it cannot be done. So all you need to do is to look for young people that are committed and transfer this dream into them to make it a vision. So I could see things. And when they come, I speak like a madman. We were in the car. I say, hey, time is running on me. Two more years, I will be a millionaire. My mother said, Cosmos. I said, ma. He said, please. I said, Mama, what's the problem? He said, let's go to this journey peacefully. <laughs> I said, what's the problem? He said, you know, this is your boss to make me go to the toilet. So, <laughs> I don't want to hear it. When you drop me, you start boasting. You don't have 100,000 naira. You are talking about a million. You know what a million is. I said, ah, Mama, but I didn't insult you. I never said anything. He said, yes, he knew, but he doesn't want me to continue to talk like that. So, I stopped the car. Wind the glass down. Get close to her ear. I said, Mom, two more years. I will be a millionaire. 
Do you want to get that? My mother is a very strong. He said, yes. I opened the door, banged the car, started. My wife said, are you out of your mind? That is your, my, your, my mother. I said, you want to get down also? I drop you. <laughs> it is my faith. It's not my mother's faith. Bible says the kingdom of God survived violence. And the violence take it by force. I couldn't take back. I am pregnant. And I don't want an abortion. Many of us have had abortion by the friends we keep. They have bought those ten God deposited in you. You know, tell you it cannot be done. All this, all this nonsense you are making. You are trying to, you are too aiming. Hey, be careful. That's what we parents do. Joseph's parents did it with Joseph. Joseph testified where he's going. His brethren had it. Listen to me. Never for the fear of controversy deny your experience. Whatever controversy it creates, let it create. When a woman had the experience with the husband, it's not a public show, but conception takes him. Only that woman knew something happened last night. And they begin to say, well, you know, my condition. People will say, what are you talking about? What, what, what is your condition? But wait now. If it's true that she's pregnant in another three months, you will see her body physiology changing. And you cannot be pregnant and live like every other person. A pregnant woman doesn't go to, 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 to jeep in the first six months. There are things you will not eat. That's what we are saying. If Christ is born in you, when you are pregnant with Jesus Christ, it restricts you. It makes you live constrained life. There are people, there are people you need to cut off in your life. People you will not need to associate to. Because they will, they will have bought that idea from you. So I protected this. I dropped my mother and went away. To the fat to eat. Before I turned 25, in tw by, by my 24 years, I made my first one million United States dollar. <laughs> I had about one million naira. And then, this was one million naira was a good money. Some of you didn't know that one naira used to be two dollars. One dollar 88 cents, only tw tw 12 cents is take out of it. You're good. The first America I went in 1979, it was in First Bank. I bought dollar, 570 naira. That's what I used to buy, $1,000. 570 naira. They cannot buy 80 cents now. We'll get $1,000. And the rest is history. What God is able to do. What I wanted to tell this church this morning is that we need to redefine our, our focus and really get back to business what God wants us to do. How the church is supposed to live. If you are among the business people, meet us in the evening. You will hear more because I don't want to dive into it. But let me still touch the power of planning and a change. Young people, you've got to plan. Don't panic, but plan. God had a plan. What happened in Garden of Eden was a monumental disaster. But God didn't panic because he has a plan. I want to focus in a few minutes on understanding the principle of planning and preparation and how it relates to strategic thinking. You are the age of 14. I am passionate about young people, so listen to me. Because I knew if you can't get it right at that tender age, and I saw the drama. I see you have a lot of young people here. We need to get it right. If you claim to be a Christian, be a good kind of a Christian. Don't be wishy-washy Christian. No man wants to share his wife with anybody. I understand that some of our brothers, we do not tell you money, we can share everything. When, you talk, when it goes to wife, nobody wants, we can share everything we have. If Jesus is your husband, let no, not, nothing share you with him. Be completely sold out. Your loyalty should never be questionable. Because this is the only way you can get the best out of him. And I'm telling you by experience, I was the, by, before I turned 16, I've learned how to fast for three days. I, I'm, I can say something now. I, I'm, I, please don't take it for anything. But let me say it to help you understand what I'm saying. This person that is talking to you now, does he look to you like somebody who had just finished breakfast? 
I'm telling you on my honor, today is my 21 day. I've never eaten any meal. I only drank water. That's why you see me went to pee two or three times. Because if you never had, had food in your body, so there's nothing, the water will come in, so it makes you go to bathroom. But I drink eight, six or eight liters of water. And these things, people look at it, and it looks like it comes easy. No, there is devotion, there is commitment that follows it. But it's easy for me, because I wouldn't even know that I'm fasting until when I get to like, on the 30th day, and I do it 40 days as, as a stretch. Not because I'm spiritual, but it's also a way to help me. But the point I am making is that if you start it earlier, it becomes your second nature. Because it's not when you have been eating food every and then you become a, no. If, if by 12 o'clock, if you haven't eaten, your body will be shaking like a, there's a potato on you. It's, it's the state of your mind. It's not that you are hungry. And you say, how do I get this energy? Because the fats in my body, my body is burning to get me, give me energy. And I'm, if, I, if you are fasting, you are not hungry. If you are hungry, please eat. But God put a fast on you, a time of consecration, a time of be able to have a relationship. So young people, I am passionate about you. How do you think? I want to be a doctor. You are not a kid thinking, concerned. How? Will you be a doctor with a mouth? In Igbo language, we said, now nah, hey, John, no, it has no fear. That means you cannot use mouth to put fish inside soup. And your people say, oh, better that, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> So, you are not getting how? I'm able to speak to you today because I refuse to accept my, my, my position. When I knew I was my son, when I had my first son, Already, I begin to ask myself, how huh? if this boy grew up and see me, I can't even express myself. I can't even talk. How, what, what kind of embarrassment is it going to make, be to him? You need to face reality. I went to hire somebody. He went to buy book six and started. I said, please, why not we start from book one? Since the, I don't know the difference between alphabet and small uh, letter, I'm putting them together. Let's start from book one. Let me start pronouncing two, two sentences. Then we add three to, to go. Because you must face reality. You must face reality. So the teacher that come to teach my boy, my boy, my in a elementary one, is my teacher. When he finish with the boy, he go to bed. I say, oh, yeah, let's start. <laughs> if I hadn't done this, I would not be able. I've sat in two public quoted bank in Nigeria. I served, and the last one I served, I was the chairman of credit committee for twelve years. I can smell bad credit. <laughs> I was the chairman of the credit committee for 12 years. Everybody in that board has master's degree, this other degree. I didn't have, but I brought something on the board that none of them have. Yeah. What they don't teach you in Harvard. Straight smart. Everywhere you have been in life is a school. Even now we are in a school. Yeah. It's whether you are willing to learn or not. But many of you only want to be in a four-corner wall and they tell you something. If they put me and you in a four-corner wall and tell us something, I would remember it better than you. But I didn't have the opportunity, but I refused for that to defer me. I became the chairman of Nigeria Table Tennis Federation for 16 years and attended five Olympics. You haven't attended one. <laughs> With your PhD, you haven't attended one. And I resigned. You saw it, C-O-N, command, commander of order of Niger is given to governors and chief judges. That is the first honor I receive. Your gift will make a way for you. <laughs> if you find your gift and serve it to humanity, doors will open. People are rushing. They, they want popularity. Like this person telling, I've never, I told you I don't have television. CNN came to interview me and carried me for 14 days. If you have watched African, one African program, you can go and check it in your to YouTube. For, how much would that have cost me? I didn't know Forbes. They find me. When you have something doing, that thing will open door. People will talk about it. 
I, I, I didn't do that for anybody to put it in a social media. I go to market and preach. Evangelism is my second nature. I was in Makoko Market preaching. Somebody put it and, put, and it went viral all over the world. And somebody who asked me, what happened if you are doing that thing and somebody shot you? I said, where is the best place to die? In the field for the kingdom of God. Listen to me. You must die whether you like it or not. But the important thing is not how long you live, but what impact you made to your association. Life is not measured by duration. Life is measured by donation. What did you donate to life? Not, not your ecological age. You can live for 1,000 years. It's immaterial. But what did you contribute to your society? Let me round this up. So young people, you must begin to plan. Have a plan for your life. Write down the things you, you do. There is a scripture that is very dear to my heart. It's found in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. It says, Commit to the Lord whatsoever you plan to do and your plan will succeed. Wow! God will come behind my plans. Yes! God will come behind your plan and you will succeed. Your life is not an experiment. Stop experimenting with your life. You experiment because you do not have you do not know the purpose. And when anything purpose is not new, that thing will known, that thing will be abuse. Abuse comes from not knowing. If you don't know the purpose of why you are here, you will abuse your life. You will experiment with it. But if it's clear to you, sit down and let the word of God penetrate to you. Let it become an integral part of you. Let this be your consuming passion. Listen to me. This three minutes morning prayer. God, good morning. You know, you know I, I'm running out of traffic. I will see you tomorrow when I come back. And David, God bless you. Already. It's not going to solve the problem. It's not going to be a, solve a problem. If you have a relationship, you don't stop. Have you have you have have a boy toast you or have you toasted a boy? You are in the phone for four hours. You never stop. If you if you have relationship with God. You like his presence. You don't want his presence to leave you. You are there. People are knocking at your door. You don't even know what they are doing. That's why I don't have television. It's not because what is it better to know the best? I don't know who is the best soccer player. What does he add to my life? I do not know. I'm not saying you should live like anti antique like me, but that is a choice I have. Every one of us have a choice to express what gives him result. But I'm telling you, I think it's a Catherine Coleman that talked to young people. He said, all you see is the grammar of the stage. These signs and miracles you see, you see the grammar. He said, but God did not love me better than any one of you. Nothing that God gave me that is not ready to give you, but you must pay. It's the price that people are not willing to pay. You must pay. If you are jumping up, you are paying a price. If you are running, you are paying a price. If you start tick, not doing anything for doing nothing. Because a man's heart is a field. If the word of God did not fill your heart, something else is going to fill it. If you don't keep your garden clean, any day you decide to plant that garden, the first thing you do, you started to weed out the weed, first of all. Is that correct? But if you already planted it, it suppresses the weed. Hallelujah! That's why we must not keep our mind open without filling it with the word of God. God richly bless you. Thank you for inviting me. I haven't even said anything, but we'll see you next time. Oh, 
and situation you have met in your life. I can see in my spirit a young man and lady here who is almost at the point of throwing in a towel. This is not the time to throw in a towel. I will invite you. Don't waste time. Come out here, young people. Any of you who are between the age of 15 years and 25, come out here. I want to pray for you. But come with a, a desire that you want to make, make, make a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ if you have never given your life to him. And if you have given your life to Christ, that you really want to rededicate yourself again. Come out here because you are the future of our life. Come out. Run, run. We don't have time. Quickly, come out. Oh. There's something about young people. We need a touch. Need a touch. deposited in you. But what I want to tell you now is that the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 34 said the way to go is to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Let me ask among all of you that are out here, if you have never made commitment to Christ, not because you haven't come to church, because it's a different thing when I became a Christian, my mother asked me, I, I put Jesus is alive today. He said, what is that thing? I said, I'm a Christian. He said, what were you before? I said, mom, I used to follow you to church. There is a difference between following your parents to church than when you made a decision to serve the Lord. If you have never made commitment to the person of Jesus Christ, and you, hear, you, are, you have heard me today what he did in my life, and you want him to do the same thing for you, raise your hand up. Don't feel ashamed. If you want to give your life to Christ, one person alone is enough. We are not looking for crowd, yes? Well, anybody more? Raise your hand up. That let, your, let God know that today you are not going to live here 
the same person. And I can assure you that nobody ever come in his presence that is the same. Owo Oluwa to si se agbara e ya lu ro 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 re to i gave me pada o re su i e o re su ti ki be Owo Oluwa Hallelujah. Those of you lifting up your hand to receive Jesus, come to the altar. Come. 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 If there's anyone out there too that needs to join them, come. Come to the altar. You want to give your life to Jesus? Come. We want to lead you in prayers. I want to lead you in prayers and ask him also to release a blessing before he continues. You want to give your heart to Jesus. Wherever you are, come, come, come. Keep coming. There are people above this age range, but you want to give your heart to Jesus. Come. I want to lead you in prayers. I want to ask that he also blesses you before we continue. Make way for them. Some people are trying to join. Make way for them to come. Come, come to the altar. You want to give your heart to Jesus. Just make way for them to come. Come, come. Wherever you are, in the gallery, in the overflow, wherever you are, you want to give your heart to Jesus. Come. Come, come, come. Keep coming, keep coming, come. Halabo shabian deke boziga baliata. Zeke be deke teke zeke. Rukariande lebro koshalahaya. Zalikriande lebo sad. Now lift up your right hand. Repeat after me, Heavenly Father. Repeat after me, Heavenly Father. I thank you. Because today, you have come to change my life. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and shed your blood for the redemption of my soul. Today, I receive you. In the name of Jesus, I say no to sin, yes to righteousness. Every covenant, every agreement I have with the enemy, knowingly or unknowingly, I break them today. As from today, I choose righteousness. Fill me up with your spirit and make me whole. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Welcome to a new chapter of your life. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to hand over to him. He's going to bless you. And once he prays for you, you just go that way. We'll hand you over to the ministers. And then he will pray for others. No, no, no. Let them see wait a little bit. Young people, let me talk to you. What you did today, I did 40, uh, 48 years ago. Like I had me said, if I have regret, I regret the 15 years I, I lived before I did that. So people are going to laugh at you, mock you, and tell you this kind of stuff is not made for people like you. I give you six months. They said the same thing to me. So told me three months, you will come back. I was a young man. I was bubbling for life. I drove motorbike like a crazy man. And people, if, if I, nobody gave me a chance, but I'm still holding on till today. And this same God that kept me will keep you. I want you to live here with confidence. Something has happened. It's, 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 it's an unconscious thing that happened. But there is a, something that germinates already in you. You need to begin to nurture it. You need to begin to cherish it. You need to begin to incubate it. Like a woman that is pregnant. She doesn't eat everything. There are medicines she doesn't drink. There are, you are going to be given instruction on how to go to nurture this seed. You are, not, you are not safe today. 
you only recognize you are saved. Christ died 2,000 years ago. And before he even came here, God slew a lamb, a type of Christ in his mind, and wrote your name in the books of life. But that seed had waken up today by you acknowledging this. Go, they are going to give you instruction. Follow those instructions. Make this Bible your companion. Don't go to bed without reading it. Because if you stuff your natural body, if you look at me now, I'm lean. Because I was not been eating for 21 days. If I eat normally, I won't look like this. The same way spiritually, if you don't eat, you die. There's no way to grow except drinking the milk of the word of God and constantly said it. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for these young people, Lord. Before they leave, I'm praying for the whole congregation. Lord, you asked me to do this and I'm doing it in your name. Oh God! If the thing I testify to them is true, oh God! If I had not make up this story, but this has been what you did. You took a beggar and make him a king. Father, I pray these little children have made a commitment to you to find a foundation, a direction in life. And all these other young ones that have done it before, that I also come here and decided to reconsecrate their life, rededicate it to you. Oh God, I pray that whatever wrong they have done, Father, let it drop into the blood of Jesus Christ and go into your mind of forgetfulness in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Oh God, look down through the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, and forgive all their trespasses. Give them a new beginning. Give them a clean slate. Oh God, begin to open door. Let your favor overshadow them. Any man that sees them, the favor of God will hit that person. Before they speak, they will get what they are looking for. Oh God, you did that for me. It wasn't my smartness. It wasn't my education. I had no pedigree. I have confidence praying for these, two, these children. Because if you did that for me, you can do it for them. Lord, they have met the condition that is required. They've come under the blood of your son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They made their consecration. Oh God, let CEOs come out of this place, Lord. Amen. Father, let people that will run multinational organization come out of these young people here under my voice in Jesus' name. Oh God, let us have governors, presidents, Father, Lord God, it is their time, it is their generation. There is something about young people. I pray for them with all my heart. Oh God, open the door that nobody will be able to open in their life. Father, amaze them with your favor. Let them not, let keep them speechless when they see your hand and what you are doing. But they must be under expectation so that it does not pass them by. Father, I pray for them with all my heart. If you ever hear me, hear me this morning. For I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. You can go now. God bless you. I expect to meet you on the path of progress. Maybe one of these days, I will uh, come to your company. You tell me, do you know that day you pray? I was there. And now I'm running this company. Let nobody, go, if you haven't written down what you want to be like, when you go home today, write them down. Don't have them in your head. A dream, a, a vision that is not written down is a wish, something you wish. Do you hear me? It's a dream. If it's a true vision, you write it down that God revealed to me this is who I'm going to be in life. Regardless of what anybody has told you. And let nobody tell you otherwise, including your mother. You got to fight to protect it. This is where I'm going in life and I will meet you in the path of progress. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Is that the way to celebrate? Is that the way to celebrate? What do we say to doctor? We love you, sir. 
Now tell your neighbor, say neighbor. You see yourself now? Pastor said you should register for evening. You refuse to register. Now you see what you are going to miss. Uh -huh. No comments. <laughs> let's have our seat, everybody. And let's make room for... Let's make room for our guest protocol. It's time to give to the Lord. Let's package our offerings, our tithes, our special seats, Club 50, Rayo, both. Any commitments you have, this is the time to put them together. I, I want us to be snappy about this so that we can bring the service to a, to a close as soon as possible. Let's package our offerings. Please, if you need an envelope, kindly lift your hand or beckon on any of our ushers and you will be served. The accounts also are displayed. You can make your transfers to any of these accounts. They are all valid accounts. If you are ready, please lift up your... Okay. Let me ask, is anyone giving their tithe this morning or redeeming your commitment? Can you please stand to your feet if you belong to this category? You are giving your tithe a tenth of your income to the Lord. Redeeming any commitment, please rise to your feet. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those ones that are redeeming their commitment to you, giving their tithe in honor of you. Father, I ask, O oh God, that the heavens will be opened over these ones as they obey in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you because the devourer is rebuked and their eyes become open to receive heaven's download. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Everybody, please let's lift up our offerings to the Lord. Ensure that you have something in your hand. And you can also lift your hand if you have made a transfer. It's just a point of contact. If you have made the transfer, please just lift up your hand. Everybody, let's lift up our hands. If you have made the transfer, lift up your hand. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. Thank you for this act of worship we are privileged to do. Everything we have came from you. And this is just a token of appreciation. Thank you because more than this, we will be privileged to do. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. All right, let's listen to the announcements via the multimedia. Then I will encourage you to still hold on because we have one or two other information to pass across multimedia. Refusing to do what you know you should do is the money mistake. There is no one under the sound of my voice today that can tell me that you don't know that you are supposed to save. But do you save? There is no one under the sound of my voice today that can tell me they don't know that they are supposed to be disciplined with their finances. But are you disciplined with your finances? You will go and pack 8 million naira car in a house and you are paying 1.5 million dollar rent with master's degree and your landlord doesn't have to start why do people find it difficult to save they don't fight if you can't give god his own 10 percent how can you save hello you in the month of november upper law at ewa We'll be bringing to you the keepers. November last year, we had the first edition, Tag the Sisters Keeper, where we brought together SS3 girls from the schools in the surroundings. We spoke to them on health and finance. But guess what? This year, we are adding the brothers to it because we understand the fact that today's young boys are tomorrow's daddies and somebody's husbands. So we'll be having the brothers keeper too this year. The event will be coming up come November 12th, 2022. It's a Saturday. 
We'll be having the sisters keep up between the hours of 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. in the afternoon. The brothers between the hours of 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. in the evening. So if you are a proprietor or you know somebody who owns a school and you would like us to invite your students to the events, SS3 girls and SS3 boys, please uh, send your name, name of the school and address of the school to Corriday on 0809. 639-4774. We are also in need of sponsorship. So if you want to sponsor us in any way, cash or kind, please see Miss Favor Awaren. Her phone number is being scrolled on the screen right now. Opolo Ati Ewa. Brains and beauty redefined. Alimosho Skill Acquisition Program is here again. Skills to be learned, graphics designing, photography, drop shipping, makeup and gilly, and digital marketing. All Wednesdays in the month of October, except first Wednesday of the month, date October 12th, 19th and 26th, time 6 p.m. prompt. Venue, Real Both Auditorium, Calvary Bible Church, Church Street, End of Enduring Street, Calvary Bus Stop, Ikotu Idimu Road, Cancel Lagos. This event is powered by Calvary Bible Church. Note, your wealth is hidden in your skill. Scale it up. Visit us on all our social media handles every week and during our special programs on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at CBC Nigeria. Like, share, and comment on all our posts. Be a kingdom ambassador for the ministry. Join us in any of our two services every Sunday. First service, 8 a.m. Second service, 10 a.m. Please note that when entering the church auditorium during the service, kindly follow the directions the ushers lead you to sit. Testimonies are now pre-recorded for Sunday services. If you have a testimony to share, please contact the church administrator for your scheduled recording session. You can also send your written testimonies via email and it will be read during Sunday service. Phone number 0802-301-7462. Email truecrimesoffice at gmail.com. Please take note that there is an offering box by the usher stand at exit 1 for the use of members. Members who want to drop any seed or offering after the offering has been collected can make use of the offering box. Please note that the box in front of the altar is a prayer box and not an offering box. Thank you. Hello, shippreneurs. The monthly meeting of Opolo Ati Ewa holds this October. Date, October 2nd, 2022. Venue, Transformation Hall, Robot Premises, Idimo, Lagos. Topic of consideration, networking and collaboration with Miss Blessing Chiejili. Time, 2 p.m. To register, kindly send your details to the phone number displayed on the screen. Opolo Ati Ewa, Brains and Beauty Redefined. Hooray! You can now give your tithes, offerings, and also redeem your special seeds online using any of our bank accounts, including GT Bank. Thank you and God bless. Sunday, 9th October 2022 is our welfare day. Let's take this opportunity to give to the less privileged amongst us. He that gives to the poor lends to God. Workers' class comes up on Saturday, 22nd October 2022 by 8 a.m. Special focus, a health talk session to be handled by a seasoned health practitioner. Theme, managing your health challenges. Please note that this meeting is compulsory for all workers in the church, pastors, evangelists, ministers, and all members of all departments. Pastors, evangelists, ordained elders, and HODs retreat will hold on Saturday, 22nd October 2022, time 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. All pastors, evangelists, ordained elders, heads of departments, and heads of fellowships are expected to be at this meeting. Life itself is a journey. To journey through life, we all have to cradle our boats and sail with the trust, not in our ability, but in how do you navigate when all hope is lost? What happens when your boat hits the iceberg? What happens when turbulence hits your boat? What do you do when the storm of life hits you hard? 
Calvary Bible Church presents a theatrical Sunday service featuring a special drama ministration by the Amethyst Crew. Tagged Shipwreck. Date Sunday, 16th October 2022. Time 10 a.m. It promises to be mind blowing and soul lifting. Don't forget to come with a friend. See you there. the turning point. Yes. Okay. Um, the book mentioned by Dr. Cosmos Maduka earlier when he was ministering. This is the book. The tri From Trials to Triumph, the Kuskari story. Um, 2,000 Naira only. He's here with just 100 copies. So, um, please, you can get it, I think, at the bookshop. Is there a book stand? Hello? Where's the book stand? Over there, right? Okay. 100 copies only. All right. The book of the month of November, of, uh, <laughs> I'm in a hurry, of October. The book of the month of October is titled 30 Reasons for Company Ownership. You know, this is a month of financial um, growth. So there is a lot of emphasis on finance, on doing business, on how to scale up. You know? So the book, this book is uh, 30 Reasons for Company Ownership, Creating Platforms for Prosperity. It's written by uh, Pastor Matthew Ashimolowo, and it costs 1,500 Naira. 1,500 Naira. 30 Reasons for Company Ownership. Creating platforms for prosperity. The third book I'm going to announce now is for all HODs, all pastors, evangelists, uh, towards our annual camp meeting this November. This is the book that we are all to read and summarize. We are going to read and summarize. Um, the deadline for Submission will be communicated to us. I don't have that date with me right now. It will be communicated to us. It's called Passing It On. Passing It On by My Smuro. Passing It On. It costs 1,500 Naira. All pastors, all ministers for short. Let's get this book. Read, summarize, and uh, we'll pass uh, the message across to you on the exact date for submission. Okay. If you misplace your ATM card, let me just say your debit card or your credit card, if you misplace any card, please see me to identify if this belongs to you. Okay. All right. So, 
this evening is the dinner with Dr. Kostos Matuka. And if, if you have not registered, I'm sorry, some other time you will join those who will be there. Please, registration has closed, and I understand that some people that have an idea of the accounts, they are transferring money even as we speak. Um, that's well, I, I won't speak for the committee, but you should know that may not work because preparations have been made. And, um, but if they can accommodate you, I think they will get in touch with you. Mm. Please, we want to encourage everybody to leave the auditorium immediately after we've taken our faith declaration, just because the hall needs to be rearranged towards the meeting that starts at four. So please, as soon as we take our faith declaration, all meetings can move out of this auditorium or you may need to reschedule. Uh, please bear with us. That is important that we do that. For the conference that continues tomorrow with the um, minister's session, we'll be having um, Reverend Tony Akiyemi and um, in the evening, I believe you don't want to miss the evening session because what God cannot do, what did I say? What God cannot do, um, if you would like to sit in the auditorium tomorrow evening, being a public holiday, I can assure you that there is a movement of people that are coming to this place. So please come as early as possible because. Pastor Jerry Eze will be in the house and the Holy Spirit will be available to answer us. 5.30 tomorrow is a public holiday. Alright, if today is your first Sunday in Calvary Bible Church, with emphasis, your first Sunday in Calvary Bible Church, we would like to acknowledge your presence. Anywhere you are seated in this auditorium, can you please stand to your feet? Can you please stand up for recognition? Anybody? Anybody? Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Please pick your Bible, your bag, your purse, whatever you came to church with. And please come forward to the front of the altar. Thank you. Please come. Don't be shy. Please come. Our God is raising up God is raising up people. Can we put our hands together for our guests? Wow. Thank you for coming. God bless you. This is Calvary Bible Church, the turning point. This is the place where we guarantee you in God that your life will take a 360 degree turn for good, for better, and better, and better, and better, and better. We have experienced it, and that's why we can tell you what we have experienced is what we are sharing. And we are inviting you to be a part of this testimony. Uh, I will just move, ask you to move to this direction. Our graceful lows will just know, have a word with you, uh, show you a bit of our hospitality, take your prayer request, and tell you all that you need to know about Calvary Bible Church. Please move to this direction. God bless you.
rise to our feet as we bring this service to a close. I want to encourage you to watch this service again on YouTube or on Facebook. It's there for you free. Please watch it. There are certain things you've not picked or you think you, you, you remember, but you may not remember. It's an awesome service. Let's take our faith declaration as we plan to exit the auditorium. Please repeat after me. This is my year of kingdom growth. And I receive the grace and the wisdom of God to pay the price required of me. I affirm today that the genuine pursuit of God's kingdom and his righteousness will be my priority all through this year. And as I yield myself fully to kingdom addiction, every day of this year, the Lord will bless me with supernatural testimonies of growth. Spiritually, relationally, in my marriage and family, physically, mentally, emotionally, in my business, in my career, and in my ministry and finances. This will be my best year yet. In Jesus' name. Amen. As we have declared, so shall it be for us in Jesus' name. Every day of this month shall produce for us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. And tomorrow evening. Tomorrow morning is 9 a.m. Tomorrow evening from 5.30 p.m.